Good morning. Good morning. Good Wednesday morning to all of you. I'm Brian. I'm the pastor at Christ UMC in Waynesboro. This is my second attempt <laughs> for today's devotion and, uh, and prayer time. Um, if perhaps you joined me about 40 minutes ago. Uh, at first looked like things were going well, but uh, there were definitely issues. Um, I think it was the web browser that I was using, which just a few months ago was the one that Facebook was recommending. Now, apparently it's not. So uh, I switched browsers. You might also notice that I switched locations. I am at the church office. Basically, it's because I didn't realize until I was on the way here that uh, the video hadn't, <clears throat> excuse me, hadn't been shown properly and hadn't recorded properly. So sorry about that. You're going to have, if you listen to me the first time, um, you're going to hear some of the same stuff, but then I understand the video cut out, so you'll be hearing new stuff from that point on. Anyway, again, it's Brian, and uh, thank you for joining me Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. It's your midweek reminder of what day it is, and it is October 7th, 2020. Uh, so thank you for taking time out of your day, perhaps live, or perhaps some other time today, or some other time during the week. Um, but thank you. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm humbled that you would take time to listen to what I might have to say. Um, usually I start these off with a couple announcements, and today's no exception. We'll uh, just got a couple quick announcements for you. One is about worship, um, which is always one of my announcements, what's going on with worship. Uh, we are worshiping in person on Sunday mornings at 815 and 1045 here on campus in Waynesboro, Christ UMC, we do have safety protocols in place. So uh, if you were interested in joining us, uh, we would suggest you perhaps read one of our uh, bulletins from one of the past weeks or the one that's going to be coming up in another day or two to see what some of those safety protocols are. We are doing distancing, we are wearing masks, things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me again. A little something caught in my throat. Um, so, you, you know, if you wanted to join us for either the 815 or 1045 worship experience, the 1045 experience is live streamed right here on Facebook. And then it's also available later on YouTube. So uh, if you're not ready to join a group of folks together in one place, hey, first, totally get that. Totally get that. Um, and so does God. So uh, don't feel pressured into having to show up. Uh, join us here. Uh, we, we still consider you part of our congregation, and we'll still be thrilled that you did so. So we just finished up a, a brief series, just a short series on money. Um, hopefully you caught that, and I do pray that uh, it touched you in some way. Um, but that means that we're going to be starting a new series, and we are. We're going to be starting a new series. It's just, a, again, another short one. It's only two weeks. Um, it'll be uh, October 11th and the 18th. Um, it's a short series on the way of salvation. I could probably add in the word Wesleyan because it is based on John Wesley. It's United Methodist understanding of salvation. And, uh, and what exactly that means? Well, uh, for United Methodists, salvation is not a, an event. We consider a, a salvation to be a process. Um, that might sound heretical to, to some folks from, uh, from various other denominations. Uh, it's not heretical. It's very scriptural and uh, based on a full understanding of what salvation means. Because although salvation is not that long of a word, there's plenty packed into it. So we'll be unpacking it for, uh, for a couple weeks. Um, this week's theme is Justified Margins. Uh, and uh, we'll explain more on Sunday. Please join us for that. And then the, on the 18th, the second week of the series is Sanctification, uh, with the subtitle of It's Getting Better All the Time. So since it's only a two-week series, you might be interested in what's taking place after that. Well, we got a couple things coming up on the 25th. That's Laity Sunday. So just the, the laity, which is a fancy way of saying the, the folks of the congregation, uh, people who aren't the, the pastor of a church are considered lay or laity, um, and they will be leading worship 
that day. Cindy Hartman is, uh, is working on putting that together. And actually, if you wanted to be part of that and planning or, or participating in the worship experience on the 25th, let Cindy know, or, or you can let us know, and we'll, we'll put you in touch with Cindy. How about we do that? And then the following week, November 1st, uh, well, that's a big Sunday. A couple of things are going to be taking place on that on that Sunday, on the 1st, because it's the first Sunday of the month. So, yes, we will be having Eucharist communion. Um, it's also All Saints Day. So uh, we'll be recognizing, uh, mentioning in our prayers, folks uh, who passed away uh, during this past year. And if uh, one of your loved ones fits that description. If, if your family experienced a loss, get in touch with the, the office here at the church and uh, get some information together. And uh, we'd, we'd be honored if you would uh, participate in that on the first. And honored if you'd let us remember your, your loved one with you. That's also the day that Kathy Boilu, our district superintendent, will be joining us for worship and leading us through our annual church conference. Now, church conference is the time when um, certain business takes place that that takes place once a year. Uh, setting of yes, setting of pastor's salary um, and uh, electing uh, various officers and positions within the church. Uh, who's going to be serving in what capacity for the following year? Um, and although anyone can attend, uh, only members of the church can vote. Uh, but all members of the church can vote. You don't have to be an officer in order to vote. Any officer, any member can vote. So we encourage you to join us on the first as well. Anyway, that's enough about worship. Now, the other announcement is my Holy Land trip. Now, uh, initially, yes, it was, it had been scheduled for March of, of this year, March of 2020, but it had to get postponed. Uh, which I did until July, and then had to postpone again, which was until September. And uh, then I decided when that one had to get canceled, I said, okay, enough of this, two months at a time. Let's just push it out a year. Uh, hopefully by then, prayerfully by then, and this, this stuff will all have calmed down. Vaccines will be available and will be... Uh, available wide enough that people can use them and, and that stuff. And uh, prayerfully, everything in, in Israel will open back up again by then. So the trip is October 25th of 2021. It's a 10-day trip. Uh, so it's from October 25th through November 3rd of 2021. Uh, wonderful schedule. This really looks like it's going to be a, a fantastic time. I personally can't wait for it. And I would love to have you join me. So you've got a year to uh, to put financials together because I realized you know that that can be a concern for folks. Um, but the earlier you book or, or at least put in your reservation, the less you have to put up up front, and uh, and actually you get a little bit of a discount if you if you book early enough. But plenty. I mean, there's there's stuff to do just about every day. They do give us. Um, I think a leisure day, a day to relax a little bit and have some free time. Uh, but other than that, we'll be uh, quite busy, able to see so much stuff. We will be uh, at the Sea of Galilee, uh, taking a cruise on that, visiting Capernaum, visiting the traditional site, uh, the site that's been, that uh, tradition says is where Jesus did the Sermon on the Mount, uh, right near there. Uh, we'll be at the Church of the Loaves and the Fish, uh, the Church of the Five Loaves and, uh, excuse me, the Church of the Fish and the Loaves at uh, Tabga. Uh, that's the place where they tradition says that Jesus did the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. Um, the wedding chapel in Cana uh, is another wonderful place to, to visit. We'll be going there. We'll be going to the Church of the Nativity, where, uh, where tradition has it that Jesus was born. Um, and as well as uh, visiting visiting the grave, the uh, the garden, that would, tradition would say is where where Jesus uh, was buried. So uh, th those are some of the places that and things that we will be doing on that trip. Like I said, October twenty fifth through November third, twenty twenty one. 
if you're interested, you want some more information, let me know. We'll get you the brochure uh, in some fashion. Anyway, enough announcements. You're, that's not what you're here for. You're here for devotional. <clears throat> so our devotional, as I've been doing for a few weeks now, is uh, using the verse of the day uh, from the Bible app that I use and uh, using that as an inspiration and, and going from there. So I like it. I like doing that because uh, I find a little bit of a challenge in it each week. It gives me something to work on because I, I don't do it until Wednesday morning. Again, challenging myself. So here's the verse. We're going to talk about the verse a little bit first, and then we'll put it into context and, and open up what our understanding of it is. The verse <clears throat> comes to us from Psalm 59, verse 16. This is today's verse. Psalm 59, 16, and I'm using the Common English Bible translation, uh, which says, But me, I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will shout out loud about your faithful love, because you have been my stronghold, my shelter when I was distraught. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I'm going to read it again for you. But me, I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will shout out loud about your faithful love, because you have been my stronghold, my shelter when I was distraught. Ah. Oh. I love that. You know, so the Psalms, one of the best things about the Psalms is the honesty of the emotions in them. The honesty of the emotions in them. And this Psalm, uh, which is ascribed to David, maybe it was David, maybe it was somebody writing uh, what they thought he might have been going through at a particular time, and stuff like that. Um, but so the author, the author has this beautiful passage, poetic passage, uh, honest passage, and says about uh, singing of God's strength and talking out loud, shouting out loud about God's faithful love. And that that uh, that phrase, faithful love, often also translated steadfast love, um, is one word in Hebrew, and, and it's one that keeps coming up again and again throughout the Psalms. It's a word that we actually might translate as an or put an understanding around of grace, God's grace, which is. Steadfast, always there. God is faithful with love, is what this, this says. God is faithful with love, steadfast with love, faithful and steadfast with, with grace. The grace is always there. Um, it is what, is what the psalmist is, is proclaiming and rejoicing over. But there's a key word in there, and I just used it again myself. The word, but. It's the first word in that, in that verse. First word in verse 16 is, but. It says, but me? Well, anytime you're using the word, but, you know, in a sentence like this, with one T, um, why, right? It's, 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 it's an alternate. It's an alternate. It's sort of the antithesis. What's taking place just before it? Well, that might be the way that is, but, okay, and then go on with the statement. So it's important to look back because this verse here is the penultimate. It means almost the last verse of this, of this song, almost the last verse of the song. So it's here at the end of the song, the, the author is using this beautiful poetic praising God, saying, I'm going to sing out every morning. I'm going to shout out about your steadfast love, your faithful love. Uh, and you have been my shelter when I was distraught. So what is it that took place before that, that the author is setting this up as the, the opposite of, the opposite of? Well, I, I'm just going to read a couple verses right before it, right before it. He's talking about his enemies. He's talking about his enemies and how they've been surrounding him. Um, and he actually actually asks God, don't kill them. Don't, don't wipe them away, but bring them down. Bring them down. And he says, then let it be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. They come back every evening, growling like dogs, talking about his enemies, talking about his enemies. They come back every evening, growling 
like dogs prowling around the city. They roam about for food, and if they don't get their fill, they stay all night. So there's, there's a lot happening here, isn't there? Let's notice the contrast, too. And this one just hit me now, so I'm glad I'm doing this again. The contrast between night and morning. The author says that in the morning, I will shout out loud. But he says this is the kind of stuff that happens at night. Well, the idea of day and night in, 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 in Hebrew literature is, yes, good versus bad. Good versus evil. Bad stuff happens at night. Good takes place during the day. Also, chaos, to at least to an extent, is at night. Things happen at night that are uncontrolled. So he's talking about his enemies being right there, growling all the time, nipping at the heels, we might say, because he's referring to them as dogs, wanting more and more and more. If they don't get their fill, they just stay there. When? All night long. The author is saying, but me, I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will shout out loud, meaning I will survive. I'm going to get through this. Although they're going to be here all night long, there will be a morning. And I will sing out loud. I will shout out loud about your faithful love because you will be with me through the night and into the morning. And the very ending of that verse is, uh, you have been my stronghold, my shelter, when I was distraught. So, church, friends, sisters and brothers, perhaps you have enemies that seem like they're encamped all around you, constantly constantly growling at you, nipping at you, seeking more and more from you. And that's lasting all night long. This psalm reminds us that God is faithful. God has faithful love, steadfast love, faithful, steadfast grace that will keep you through the night and will provide a morning. And in that morning, we sing. Amen. Well, I do pray that uh, these words uh, touch you and inspire you in some way and, and help you get through this day. And I also pray that the video worked this time. <laughs> Have a wonderful Wednesday or whatever day it is you are experiencing when you're watching this. <coughs> and I will see you on Sunday and again next week.